Hello and welcome to another video and today we're here for another episode of the Historic Challenges. So let's check out the Historical Market then, see what's on here. So we've got the 2006 Honda, the 2010 Honda and the 2010 Yamaha. Two of those are actually uncommon so I will buy those. Now I'll buy the 2010 Honda as well which takes all the way down to 5,400 diamonds. So I hope we really win this challenge today. So it's at Assen, uh, 9 laps, obviously 990 again. So I've got my custom rider selected here, but I don't want to play as my custom rider. I want to play as one of the official riders. So obviously we've already played as Rossi from 2003. We played as Kappa Rossi from 2004. We have played as both of the DLC riders, Melandri and Edwards. Uh, so there's obviously Lorenzo 2012, the Mulin 2007, uh, Lorenzo 2010, Rossi 2006, Burn 2004, Rossi 2004, Ukawa 2002, Barros 2002, Kato 2002, we've got Rossi 2002. So I think I'll actually play as Kato. So, 9 lap race at Aten, let's get straight into it. So Hayden is fastest again then, so they must have changed that in the update then. Ukawa's second, I'm guessing Barros is going to be third. So there is going to be two 2002 Hondas on the front row. Uh, Vermeulen down in 14th place, showing me here, so does that mean we've got to watch out for Chris Vermeulen in this race? Probably. Last couple of ones he's been pretty near the front. Obviously 6th place for myself then, as Kato. 9 laps ahead of us at Assen. I think the AI are a bit better at Assen than they have been in previous years, so hopefully. Hopefully they don't destroy us like they did in Aragon. So here we are then, getting ready to start put up Palmo 2 to try and get Best start we can. Lights on away we go. That's gone quick. Caprosti 2003 on our left hand side there. Put the power mode back down to one as we go towards turn one. Sat in behind Alex Barros here. Around the outside goes Biaggi again. Biaggi loves to go around the outside. Didn't work for him. But caprosti has got passes. So has now Roberts as well. But we're around the outside of the pair of them. No. Nope. They've both stayed in front of us anyway. Here comes Melandri as well at the inside. So we're getting absolutely smoked off the line here. Bayliss has gone past us as well. Lorenzo's almost hit us at the back. Out of Strub and then on the power. Probably the wrong gear to be in. To be honest, we've got outpowered by all of these riders here. So we're down to ninth place. It's been a pretty dreadful start, it must be said. Let's see if we can make up some places here. On the brakes. Oh, uh, no. They were going too wide to make it a bit difficult. Can we try and get past Bayliss, though, at least? Someone's right behind us as well. You can hear them behind. Bit of a wheelie there as so we're trying to find a way around Troy Bayliss if we can. Bayliss now around the outside of Melandri. I'm on the inside of Melandri. We've had a bit of contact with Melandri. There is Vermeulen. So, yeah, probably do have to watch out for him because he's already to 10th place. On the inside of Melandri. Oh, we've just absolutely sat him up. Bit of an aggressive move, but I'm getting stuck behind. And I think Vermeulen's going to come up the inside. Yes, he has. He's kind of bashed me a bit wide and he's got through now. And here comes Rossi as well. What is going on here? Wow, well, we've gone totally off the track there. We've gone even onto the grass. We've got a penalty. That's fair enough. So that's definitely going to affect the race. Maybe we've got to wait for the race to settle down a little bit here before we start making some moves. But someone's clearing off at the front. I think it's Ukawa again. Rossi's trying to make his way through. Through to Tim as she came. We've kind of bashed the mule in a bit there. With massive wheelie trying to bring the front wheel down. Talk to eighth place now. We've got a bit of damage as well. Here comes the mule again around the outside on the brakes for turn one. Oh, oh, Rossi's, Rossi's just hit Vermeulen. Rossi's took Vermeulen out, so that's those two sorted then. They're gone out of the way. So Troy Bayliss, once again, is now the target. Yeah, this is way better than the Ducati. It's not wheeling so much as a crash. Casey Stoner's gone down, the 2012 Casey Stoner. But meanwhile, we're going past the other Australian, Troy Bayliss. So up into seventh place now, Loris Caparossi on the 2003 Ducati up ahead. A little bit wide there. But I think we're starting to find some sort of pace from this bike now. So hopefully we can try and get our way through the pack. I think they're closing into the leader again at the front, so there's a bit of a pack. So as long as I can get onto the back of the train, it doesn't matter. But Caparossi's falling back from it. Up oh, the inside of Caparossi now, one of the fastest corners through the Rams hook there. Is he going to come back at us? As we go down towards the Gert Tim Chicane. Hayden actually leads, so it's not Ukawa. Uh, did we do the fastest lap then? No, we're a tenth off of what Hayden did. Through the Chicane, then we've closed up to KRJR. Past Caddy Roberts Jr. Here we go. I think we're just slightly off Hayden's pace a little bit. We need to try and up our pace if we can. We're now up into fifth place once again. Robert Studney's nearly hit us at the back. Rossi's actually just done the fastest up, so I'm not sure which Rossi it is. I'm a bit scared it's the Ducati one again. We've now passed Jibber now. Oh, we've had contact with Jibber now, and that's do moderate damage, apparently. He's hit my rear wheel. How have I picked up damage from that? 
little bit ridiculous if you ask me, but there's two 2002 Hondas in front of us. We've got to dispatch them and hunt down after the, I think it's the 2006 Hayden, is it leading? I believe so, so we've got to go hunt him down. He's got quite a big gap, so we definitely can't, you know, mess around behind these guys. Okay, Caparossi's just sort of gone a bit wide there. I think I might have tagged him, perhaps, but I was just, I thought I was just slotting him behind him, but I think I've hit him wide. So Barros has gone out of my way now. So it's Toru Okawa up next, and then it's just between me and Hayden, but Hayden is really stretching away from Okawa. Look at him. He's that dot in the distance. That's probably about three seconds we've got to go get to him, and we were barely quicker, so it's definitely going to be difficult. Oh, I was looking for the move into the Rams hook then on uh, Toru Okawa. But weren't quite close enough to do it. Maybe we can get him through the Gertz and Chicane here. As he flipped the bike over on the power. Out of the corner we go. Yes, we've got the drive on him. So here we go, side by side up towards the line. Trying to get past Dukawa, we've done it. So we're now up to second place. So it's now Nicky Hayden ahead. Rossi again doing the fastest lap, so we need to try and get gone before Rossi turns up. Stoner as well, although he's the one that crashed, wasn't he? Also, oh, I think it's the Rossi and Stoner that have crashed, considering how close they are coming over the line. So I think they're not a threat to us, actually. Right, so we're coming towards the line to start the final lap then. We've got the gap down to 1.3 now, but it's just not going to be enough. Ooh, nine tenths. We are getting close, but just not close enough. Oh, what? Okay, I'm out of fuel. No, driven out. How have I run out? Oh, no. I've never actually... I think I've had this happen once to me in an online race. Oh, what? No. Now that really frustrated me, so I've put the I've put ten laps of fuel on the bike now, because I didn't even like use Palmo two of them off the start. So I don't see how I even ran out of fuel because I was in one and zero for the rest of the race. I had one point one laps of fuel left starting the lap last lap and I've run out of fuel halfway around it. There's a crash behind, Andrea Vizioso's involved. Looking for the outside of Barros now. So it's a third. It's been a pretty decent start, but Sete Gibbonau is trying to get the inside, but we're making sure that's not happening. Closing off any opportunity for that, and he's just... Well, he's, him and Biaggi have gone to the car park, and they've uh, collided with Bayless now, I think. So that's put them, well, definitely out of contention now. Three Hondas at the front. Two, two 2002 ones, a second and third. Actually, and fourth as well, because Ucar is still behind us. I was looking for a way around Barros, so we didn't quite do it. I didn't get a penalty for that, luckily. Uh, Barros is all over the back of Hayden, actually, though. So that's quite interesting. Wow, Barros. Go on, Barros. He's really looking for a move on Hayden here. We need to try and find our way past Barros if we can. Well, the Hayden is right there. Also, we did almost take... We took about a second or so out of him over the course of that. To be honest, I took about four tenths out of him the entire time until the penultimate lap, and then I took almost a second down on that lap alone. So I was really, really catching him, but... It's just too little too late. We're closing up on Barros now. At the inside into turn 14. Pretty aggressive move. Sent us both a bit wide, but there's no one even anywhere near, so we're both going to keep the positions. It's up to second place at the end of the first lap there. So we're on the hunt of Nicky Hayden already. And apparently we've already got 7 point laps of fuel left. 7.4 laps of fuel left. This, this game makes no sense. This game makes no sense. I've put, I've put 10 laps of fuel in and I've used over 2 laps of fuel on the first lap. I don't know, the, the fuel system is broken. It is so broken, it's a joke. I feel like it worked fine when the game first came out. Like the rest of the game did, until they added patches that broke everything. Um, so yeah, we've got to watch out for the fuel. In fact, I'll probably just sit behind Hayden for a bit and save some fuel, because otherwise it's going to run out again. So we've now got 11.6 laps of fuel, I've just done the fastest lap, so I'm hoping that I should have enough fuel now left for the end of the race. So we go, we're closing up on Nicky here. Not close enough to have a move, though, into the Ruskin hook. You have to be very, very close behind, of course, really, to attempt that. So obviously, otherwise, it could be an almighty collision. We're almost a second now ahead of Barros. Nine tenths behind me, he is. So we are pulling away, but like the first attempt, obviously, Hayden got about two and a half seconds in the lead. This time, though, we're right on his tail. We didn't let him get that far ahead of us. It's a shame, because I actually was quite liking the way the first one turned out. To be honest, obviously there was a little bit of time left, you know, he was a, a bit ahead, he was clearly leaking quite a bit of time. Obviously I know I have my penalty, but it could have been quite a close finish regardless. 
through the last chicane. We've actually got a really good run on Hayden and we've gone past him now as we got towards the line. 32-7 there on that lap. That must be the fastest lap because, well, at least out of us because I've overtaken him now. So we hit the front for the first time here in this challenge. He just went so slow through the middle part of the chicane. And I managed to get straight in front of him. So we're now up into the lead. We've ran a little wide though. Is that going to line to come back underneath? No, it's not. So get ready for strubbing. Get ready for a dive bomb. That's what I'm thinking of anyway. So hopefully we can try and pull away at the front now. He's already dropped almost back into the clutches of Barros. I suppose that's what happens when you pass the AI. We've got seven tenths on him already. Let's see if we can pull out a gap on him. Stoners has done fastest lap. Not sure what place he's in sixth. So we should still be okay for a little while. Stoners now down. So yeah, I'd say no threat at all at this point. Although Hayden's coming back at me, so I need to try and up my pace again and uh, stop looking at the fuel, but uh, I need to watch out I don't run out again because apparently this game just likes to, you know, siphon your fuel for no reason. Starting the last lap then, how far is Hayden behind? Nine tenths of a second. I think we've got this in the bag. We've got 1.6 laps of fuel left actually, so I'm going to put it down to zero just because, well, I don't, I don't want to repeat of last time. And obviously we had plenty of fuel last time as well. I suppose we actually have done quite a good fuel saving job because it's a nine lap race, we've put 10 laps of fuel in and we're going to have more than a lap left at the end, so I suppose it means we've saved the fuel pretty well. But last time I also did the same thing and I've been running in zero random times throughout this race as well to try and save fuel, whereas that time I was running one the whole time and then, actually I did run zero for about a lap, but I've been running zero for like a, quite a few laps in this one just to make sure we didn't run out. We're now 1.1 ahead of Nikki. So everything should be all sorts of stone as you know got himself back up into 11th now I was about to say 12th but obviously he overtook Burn at the same time so pretty good recovery from him considering he had a crash as well so coming over the line then 33-1 on that last lap we really really did back off but we've won the challenge here at Assen so then we we got 9 tenths ahead of Hayden in the end he actually wasn't as far ahead of Barros as he was in the last attempt Melandry got up to 4th place I never really saw him as the rider that would be able to get his way through I think it is just that the newer bikes kind of power their way past the older ones sometimes. Except Barros on his 2002 Honda, he's kind of stuck it in there. But Ukar was dropped down to 7th, although I think he might have got disrupted by Stoner a little. Stoner was only 10 seconds behind, even with his crash, so not too bad. But I suppose that would mean that he wouldn't have caught us. He beat a lot of riders. Biaggi and Dovi are out. I've seen Do I saw Dovi go down at one point. I think Biaggi had that crash on the first lap, didn't he? That's probably why Sete is all the way down to 17th, because he was also collected in that. So have a look at this on board with Biaggi then. So obviously he's seen Jib and Al sat up. He's kind of followed him in. They both returned to the racing line. Oh, and Biaggi's hit Bayless and knocked him off. That's obviously been Biaggi DNF then, I'm guessing, yeah. So this is Stoner's crash then. Very odd one. A bit like something I would do. Wheelie, and then the bike just started wiggling and just flew him, threw him off. Oh, and he got smalled all the way in the gravel. But he, he got straight on the power. He weren't bothered. He came back on the track. I don't know how he even caught back up to those guys after that. He was so far behind them. So there you go. It does actually go to show that you, the AI can do massive wheelies like this. I'd love to see it slowed down. So what he's done is so he's got on this massive wheelie and he's held the lean angle on it. And then he's decided to try and straighten it up, I think. And he's just sort of unsettled it and it's just had him, had him down. When really the best thing he should have done was get off the power. So we gained our 15,000 diamonds this time. Which brings us up to 20,400. So let's see what's on the historic market then. So we've actually got plenty of common things. We've got two common and one uncommon. So we'll buy the 2004 Yamaha. We'll buy the 2003 Movie Star Honda. And we'll buy the 2012 Ducati. Which actually leaves us with 14,400 left. And then obviously that's not taken into account next time. So now we've got 14 out of the 41 riders and 15 out of the 36 teams. So we're definitely getting through it now. But I hope you did enjoy that race. It was very, very exciting. Obviously, I actually preferred the first one because, you know, I had to fight my way through the pack. So I've got both of the attempts, obviously, in the video. And I would have I would have taken second place fine in that race just because of how it turned out. But just the fact I ran out of fuel made me have to restart it. I didn't actually want to. Just I ran out of fuel for seemingly no reason. So you thought the fuel was a little bit weird on that track, it must be said. Although it did work out in the end by putting the extra lap of fuel in. But you would have thought, putting nine laps of fuel in, even like, you know, going to fuel saving mode for a bit of the race, you'd have plenty of fuel, but apparently not. 
and just because I was focusing on Hayden, I wasn't looking at the last lap. Usually I'll always check on the last lap to see how much fuel we've got, and I can put it into zero if I need to. And just because I was too busy trying to focus on catching Hayden, I didn't notice. But like I said, I hope you did enjoy that one. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the day. I hope you're all staying safe, and I shall see you in the next video.